Chapter 5 Dylan woke as the sun's rays first peeked through his windows. In truth, he hadn't slept much the night before. After spending a few hours talking with his mother, thoughts of Caitlin and how to win her over had kept him up most of the night, along with thoughts of her son and how he would play into everything. He knew he had hurt Caitlin when he left, but he'd had no idea how much until seeing how skittish she was around him and how unwilling to talk about the past. He and his mother had brainstormed a few ideas, but Dylan knew he needed a grand gesture to convince her of his feelings. Words alone wouldn't convince her. Pushing back the covers, he padded into the bathroom for a shower. The warm water pounded his back in a soothing, rhythmic motion, but it did not grant him any wisdom. With a sigh, he turned the water off, toweled dry, and dressed for the day. The lodge was quiet as he made his way to the kitchen. Everyone else was either still asleep or out already for the day. He opened the cupboards, pleased to see filters and ground coffee right where it always had been. Dylan stuck a filter in the bowl, filled it with grounds, and set the coffee brewing. He had just poured a cup when he heard the lodge door open. Caitlin? An unfamiliar voice called. Curious as to who this stranger was, Dylan cupped his mug and stepped into the living room. I don't think she's up yet. Can I help you? Oh, the blonde turned to him, a smile on her pretty face. She was dressed for snow with boots on, pants, at least one sweater he could see, and a scarf around her neck. In her hands was a bakery box. And who might you be? Dylan Fields, he said, stepping toward her and offering his hand. He had no idea what might be in the box, but his stomach growled at the thought of food. Her eyes widened. Oh, she said in a very different tone. I guess my reputation must precede me. He didn't know this woman, but it was obvious from her reaction that Caitlin had filled her in. But I'm afraid I don't know who you are. Oh. Again, the word was uttered differently, and Dylan began to wonder if she could say anything else. I'm Melody Phelps. My business partner, Caitlin supplied as she entered the room. Her hair was still wet, and Dylan tried not to imagine her in the shower. Right, her business partner. Melody looked from Dylan to Caitlin and back again before clearing her throat. Well, I hope I'm not interrupting anything, but I brought donuts. Thank heavens, Dylan said at the same time Caitlin uttered, You interrupted nothing. Oh. Dylan bit his lip to keep from laughing. Melody was certainly expressive given her lack of words. So, anyone hungry? Another growl escaped Dylan's stomach as she opened the box to display six different donuts. There was a glazed, a chocolate, one with sprinkles, a powdered donut, an eclair, and his favorite, a bear claw. I'm starving. Mother went to the store yesterday, but she either isn't up yet or she has disappeared for the day. Either way, there's nothing cooked yet. Shall we eat in the kitchen? Melody looked to Caitlin with wide eyes, as if unsure if she should accept. Caitlin nodded, and the trio trooped into the kitchen. There's coffee, Dylan offered, and cream in the fridge. Oh, I already had mine, Melody said as she sat at the table. And I can wait until later, Caitlin said. Okay, Dylan set his coffee down and sat in the chair across from Caitlin. He reached for the bear claw and hit Caitlin's hand instead. He glanced up at her, but she smiled sweetly. Sorry, they're my favorite too. 
Melody chuckled a little and dropped her head as Caitlin brought the bear claw to her mouth and took a large bite. All right, two can play that game. Dylan grabbed the eclair, his second favorite, and shot a pointed look at Caitlin. Oh, good morning, everyone, Margie said as she entered the kitchen a few minutes later. Her sweater was black today, but covered in puff paint that depicted a snowy scene. I guess I overslept. I'm sorry I didn't have breakfast ready for you. She shot Dylan a loaded look. They had planned for his mother to be late, to hopefully give him some time alone with Caitlin. It had worked, sort of. No worries, Margie. But now that we're done, maybe you can tell me where the Christmas decorations are? I'd like to get the room decorated today. Caitlin balled up her napkin and turned her attention on Margie. Of course, dear. I keep them down in the basement. I'm sure Dylan would be happy to fetch them for you and help you decorate the room afterwards. Oh, that's not necessary, Caitlin said. The decorating, I mean. Melody and I should be able to handle it. I don't mind. Dylan pushed back his chair. I'll start bringing up the boxes right away. He left the room and Margie turned to the stove to begin making breakfast for the rest of the guests. What is he doing here? Melody leaned across the table and whispered to Caitlin as her eyes shifted to the path Dylan had taken. I had no idea. Caitlin said, shaking her head. He showed up yesterday when I was looking for decorations. What was I supposed to do? Are you going to stay here with him? I'm not sure what else to do. I don't want to drive back and forth every day. And if I stay in town, I'll cut into my profits. She dropped her head into her hands. It's so hard seeing him, though. Actually, I thought he was pretty easy on the eyes, Melody said with a smile. Caitlin's head popped up and she glared at her friend. Okay, I'm sorry. He is very good looking, though. I know, Caitlin moaned. Box one, Dylan announced as he re-entered the room. A light sheen of sweat glistened on his forehead. Only about nine more to go. You have to run a race to get this? Caitlin asked. No, just climb stairs and a mountain of other things. Oh, right. Sorry about that. I guess we'll get started sorting so I can see what we can use and what we'll need to purchase. Sounds good. I'll head back down for another delivery. Just call me St. Dylan. He flipped a little salute and then walked out the door. Handsome and nice, why did you guys break up again? Melody asked as she stared pointedly at Caitlin. Caitlin shook her head. It was bad enough she had to be here with Dylan. She didn't need Melody pointing out his good traits. Let's forget Dylan for the moment and see what's in here. Of course, whatever you say, boss. Melody picked up the trash as Caitlin hefted the box and carried it into the living room. She set it on the couch and opened the lid. Strings of light greeted her from inside, and from the look of them, they had just been wadded into the box. It was going to be a long day today decorating. Melody entered the living room, her blonde hair pulled up in a ponytail. Caitlin handed her a portion of the string. Guess we better get started and see if any of these still work. Morning, Mom, Jack said as he entered the living room, still in his pajamas and yawning. Morning, Jack. I'm afraid today's going to be a busy day for me, but maybe Margie can give you some work to do. Jack shook his head. That's okay, Mom. I've got my tablet. I can keep myself busy. But does Margie have some breakfast? Caitlin smiled. Jack was like a bottomless pit. He could eat breakfast, and then like clockwork, an hour later he'd be asking for a morning snack. She hoped it just meant he was growing, but it sure was hard to keep enough food in the house for him. 
She probably will soon if she doesn't already. Why don't you go ask her? As Jack left the room and the girls began untangling the lights, Dylan showed up with another box. And then another. By the time he had brought up the last box, they had spread out five different strings of lights. You sure you don't want my help? Dylan asked. Caitlin looked up and realized he hadn't been kidding about there being ten boxes. If they were all like this one, it would take them all day just to sort. Unless she let him help. All right, you can help. Can you see if you can find decorations? I am happy to help beautiful women, Dylan said with a smile. Caitlin tucked her head to hide her blush. This job suddenly felt a lot bigger than she had planned on. True to his word, Jack stayed out of her hair, and by mid-afternoon they had sorted all the items, and Caitlin had decided which they were going to use and which could go back in boxes. Now they needed a tree. I can try to come back tomorrow if you'd like, Melody said, as her eyes jumped from Caitlin to Dylan. Caitlin glanced at her watch and cursed her timing. Melody did need to head back, and as there was no way she could get a tree on her own, that left her going with Dylan. No, don't worry about it. I'm sure Dylan and I can handle it, right? Caitlin didn't want to be alone with him, but the faster she got the room done, the faster she could return home and forget Dylan Fields again. I'd be happy to. Are you sure? Melody asked with a lowered voice. Though she leaned in, her voice was still loud enough that Dylan heard, and Caitlin caught his smile before he turned his face. I'm sure. Go. Melody stared at her a moment longer. All right, let me know if you need any more help. I will. Drive back safely. Call me, Melody mouthed, and then she was gone. Caitlin looked at Dylan, and her mouth dried up. She couldn't go alone with him. He still affected her too badly. Jack popped his head in the room. Mom, are you done yet? I'm bored. His voice had that whiny timber Caitlin hated, but she couldn't really blame him. He had been good all day. Then inspiration struck her. I'm not done yet, Jack, but would you like to go with Dylan and me to pick a Christmas tree? His eyes lit up and he bounced from one foot to the other. A real tree? Like one we cut down from a forest? Yep, just like that. Yes, please. Wonderful. She turned to Dylan so she could watch his reaction. Dylan, this is my son, Jack. Jack, this is an old friend of mine from high school. No look of shock crossed Dylan's face, so Margie must have told him about Jack. He leaned down and stuck out his hand. How you doing, little man? I'm not a man. I'm five. Dylan smiled as he stood back up. Oh, well, you could have fooled me. Think you could help me cut down a tree? I'm not allowed to touch sharp objects, Jack said, his tone and expression serious. Caitlin bit her lip to keep from laughing. Why don't you go get your coat, Jack? He's very literal, isn't he? Dylan asked as Jack left the room. Well, he's five. Kids are pretty concrete at this age. Yeah, I guess I don't know much about kids. He's cute, though. Dylan ran a hand through his hair, and Caitlin wondered if he was nervous or just unsure what to say. She realized she would probably feel similarly if he had been the one to show up with a kid. An uncomfortable silence descended as they stared at each other, but thankfully Jack returned moments later. Well, Caitlin was at a loss for words. Shall we go? Dylan led the way to his truck and opened the door for her and Jack. Caitlin shot him a glance, but climbed in after her son.